Okay, so this video, <laughs> I've wanted to do this video for a long time. We're going to talk about cross-dominant shooting. Most of the people on the planet are right-handed. I am. Most of the people who are right-handed are also right-eye dominant. I'm not. So I'm left-eye dominant and right-handed. When I got into shooting, that was difficult. It was something that I didn't really know about, and I had to um, figure out how to manage. <laughs> Uh, so, this is my Lone Wolf uh, Compact, Timberwolf Compact. Great pistol, you've seen it before in my videos. This thing has been 100% since I've done the extractor and um, ejector on here. Anyway, this gun is fantastic. It has Ameriglo two dot sights on here, iron sights. This is like any other pistol. Now, if you tend to shoot left eye, you've got a couple options. You can change your eye dominance, sorry, your hand dominance to your other side, to, to align with your eye dominant side. Um, depending on how much you favor one side or the other, this might be difficult, this might be easy, uh, but nevertheless, if it's possible with your body and with the type of gun that you've chosen, so for example, the SIG 226, is very biased toward a right-handed shooter. All the controls are on the left side of the gun to actuate with your right hand thumb. If you put it to your left side, it's going to be harder to shoot. Excuse me. So, um, this gun, you can kind of manage. The slide release, you can work with your index finger. Uh, you can work the magazine release with your middle finger or index. Excuse me, I got the hiccups. I just had some amazing barbecue uh, pulled chicken, homemade, but bad idea right before filming. Anyway, um, <laughs> but most of the stuff that you need to do, you can do with your opposite hand, packing the slide over the top, all that jazz. Um, but I still prefer to shoot off my right side. If you want to shoot off your left side or your non-dominant side, you can absolutely do that. Um, people learn, it's fine. So. It's just like this. You don't change anything about body mechanics. You just set yourself up to shoot from that other side. However, if you still want to shoot off your right-hand side, if you're left eye dominant, you've got a couple options. Number one, you don't have to change anything except your head position. Now, I sigh a little bit when I say this. I've heard this recommended more than any other method to deal with cross-dominant shooting. A uh, pistol, that is. And I don't like it personally, but I'm going to say it because a lot of professionals and a lot of people who really know what they're talking about with us have recommended it. And I also do this to a some extent, but I really, I, not a lot. What they say is don't compromise your body position, don't compromise your grip, nothing of that. Um, just extend as you would normally. There, I just checked. <laughs> so I'm extended, I'm under my right eye, and tilt your head to the side, and you're good to go. I don't like this because my head is looking that way, my eyes are looking that way. It it doesn't it doesn't feel comfortable. It's not a, a natural position to be shooting, and I lose that much peripheral vision. Um, I've heard other people recommend. Uh, let's see, there we are, canting the gun a little bit to kind of go under your left side. Um, not really great either. Uh, you can do this, but. Yeah, good luck. Um, it, it messes up your body mechanics a little bit. And also, most pistols eject this way, so out of the uh, right-hand side. So here's the ejector. Sorry, extractor and ejectors inside. Um, so it ejects out that side. So when you go like this, you're kind of ejecting upward. Careful with that. You might get brass to the face. You might... Uh, induce malfunctions. If you have a weak ejection, your round, your casing is going up and then right back down. So, um, good luck. Uh, what I like to do is I actually compromise my shooting position a little bit. Instead of being over here, I'm exaggerating, but the slide is in line with the bones of my forearm, I shift the gun over to be under my left eye, my dominant eye, and I just shoot like this. It's not that big of a deal. Um, I do compromise my shooting position, like I said, and I find that my rapid-fire shots do not uh, stay stacked 
as well. Still recording. Good. Whew. But it works. It works fine for me. And I, I do put my head to the side a little bit. I, I kind of tuck my, my chin down, but I don't really crank it over. Um, it's just kind of how I've, I've always shot. I, I put my head down a little bit, and then I pick the gun up, and I compromise my shooting position, and it works fine. I'm able to look past to whatever my target is, and then when I need to make a precise shot, I just shift my focus to that front sight, pull the trigger, make sure I'm empty so I don't take out my camera, and that's it. Next we're going to talk about shotguns, or rather long guns with iron sights. <laughs> I don't have many long guns with iron sights, but shotguns are a fine analogy for that, and this is where I noticed the issue first. Uh, this gun has dual beads, so it's just like any other gun with iron sights, where um, you have to line up two things and the gun is in line. A couple things you can do. Like I said, number one, just learn to shoot off your non-dominant side. Um, I find myself shooting shotgun about 50% off of my left side, and it's fine. It's actually not bad at all. Um, I've been doing it for so long that uh, I can I can just pick up a shotgun, shoot it, my, shoot it off my left side, and it feels totally natural. Uh, when I'm shooting trap and skeet, which is very dynamic, I find that it's just easier to go off my left side. I know I'm not holding the gun right, that's fine. Um, I know it's just easier to go off my left side, and everything works fine. Uh, like I talked about with handguns, you have to take into account your hardware. Uh, this is why I choose Mossberg-type shotguns, because I can use the safety with my left hand just as easily as I can use it with my right. I can use the bolt release just as easily with my right hand as my left. Um, Everything else is ambidextrous. The only thing that's different is the ejection port side and loading the gun under stress, which I can do just fine with my left side as opposed to my right side. It's it's the same. If I want to go off my right side, my right shoulder, it's a little more complicated. So this is why I have a shotgun with two beads on it. Because when I've got the gun up here, my left eye gives me a much clearer picture looking at the side of the gun, kind of obliquely at the gun. And it's not the best sight picture. So what I have to do is I kind of close my left eye, find the sight picture with my right, open my left eye back up, and then I keep my chin locked on this um, this cheek piece. And then I can kind of... I can kind of be close. Um, it's not nearly as natural as going off my left shoulder but I can make it happen. I can make it work. It's not easy. And shooting iron sights on a rifle, a lot of times I'll just say, you know what, screw it, left shoulder, let's go. It might not be the answer you wanted here, but honestly for me it's been the thing that's worked the best. Now, there is one thing you can change if you want to use technology to help you out. This is my AR-15. This is a heavy AR, by the way. Uh, it is not lightweight. <laughs> um, but this is a 14 and a half inch uh, Frankenstein build that I did. Um, this is my first AR that I built, and it's fantastic. 14 and a half inch pin welded um, with a... Doesn't matter. <laughs> primary arms, uh, primary weapon systems, uh, FSC 556, and a bunch of other stuff. But... I have a couple of things to help me out. Now, ARs, while they're not made ambidextrously, are actually very convenient for also shooting off your left side. Um, the safety is something that you can get. Um, a, excuse me, a uh, ambidextrous safety for, and I prefer that. Even if I'm on my right side, I turn the safety off with my thumb, and I put the safety back on with my trigger finger. It just as a natural thing of taking my finger off the trigger, going to that safety. And then for a lot of times I'll just do the uh, ejection port while I'm there. If you want to set this up for success, for shifting shoulders more easily, um, you don't have to change anything. The magazine release, which is your index finger, when you go to the left side, you can get it just as easily. I have a sling that I haven't extended, so that's fine. Just as easily with your thumb and rip the magazine out kind of like an AK-ish. 
Um, you can actuate the safety, you can actuate the ping pong paddle with your uh, trigger finger instead of your thumb on the opposite side. So everything kind of works where it ought to, and even the gun ejects out um, the right side, but there's a nice little um, brass kicker on the side of the gun. Now, I have some gear on here that can help me out. Number one, the most clear thing, is this big freaking green laser. Um, I don't know if you can see that. There, you can see it. Uh, big green laser. So, if the gun's not in my shoulder, if I'm holding it kind of low ready or something, I can have the laser on. Um, if I have to use this for home defense or something, a big green visible laser. Again, I don't need to run night vision. Um, but for me, a big green laser uh, is intimidating as hell if it goes onto someone's chest and you're like, dude, get out of my house. Um, also, if I have to hand this to someone who's less familiar slash comfortable with iron sights and all that jazz, or even a red dot, um, a big green laser is pretty easy. It's keep the laser pointed to where you want to shoot, pull the trigger when you're ready, and you've got 30 rounds or whatever it is um, before you have to reload, so you, you'll probably be okay. Uh, the other piece of kit that can help quite a bit is a red dot. Now, um, Aaron Cowan of Sage Dynamics has a really good video that I'll link to below where he talks about red dots and how you can actually have the red dot fully obscured and still use the red dot to make precise shots at distance. This is the principle, so how I can use a red dot, let me turn it on, when I'm shooting at distance with my right side. My left eye looks around the red dot, my right eye finds the red dot and I can just look at distance and it works perfectly. Um, I can even obscure the red dot fully. It doesn't actually change much. There, the red dot's fully obscured, I can still see it. I still see it lined up at the camera. It's fine. So this is something that can help you out if you have a shotgun, um, even a trap and skeet type shotgun. You can put a red dot on it. If you have an AR, you can put a red dot. So it works just fine. I'm turning off my red dot because, come on. It's like five seconds of holding the button. Vortex Spark AR, pretty good dot, by the way. If I use my iron sights, I go back to those same issues of I gotta kind of close my left eye, find the sight picture, do all that jazz. It's a little more difficult. If I put down my rear sight and I just use a gross sight picture from the optic tube and the front sight post, it's a little easier, it's a little more manageable. Similarly, red dots on pistols. Glock 17 with a red dot sight on here. Um, unlike the rifle, red dot under your non-dominant eye and being able to see everything in distance. With the pistol, just put it under your dominant eye. Just line it up just like normal sights. Everything works fine. You're good to go. That's it. So when I tend to shoot, I will put the gun over my left side if it's feasible. On my left eye, if feasible. Um, sometimes that means shouldering the gun on my left side. Uh, if I prefer to shoot off my right side where I'm doing more stuff like an AR-15 or a pistol, um, I either use technology like a red dot sight or a laser to help me out so I don't have to line up, you know, iron sight, iron sight, and then kind of look around. It's complicated. Just put a red dot there, look through it with your non-dominant eye, you're fine. Um, it'll work for you. Um, pistol shooting, again, I tend to shift it over a little bit to my left side. I find that I can shoot fine. Uh, the one thing I didn't cover today is scoped fire, so anything where you have a magnified optic. If you have a magnified optic, that's a different story. Um, for me, I've shot magnified before. I don't have a lot of magnified guns. I tend to just stay on my left side. Bolt action rifles, they're fine. Um, off the left side, uh, long guns of other sorts, semi-automatics, all that, I just tend to shoot off my left side. If you're cross dominant shooting, I'm sorry for you, I'm in the same boat, I, I hear you. Um, getting into the sport might be a little more difficult. Um, 
but hopefully these tips can help you out. Again, everything here is unloaded. If you're going to be manipulating guns or seeing what works for you, please make sure you follow the firearm safety rules. Keep the gun unloaded. And just for good measure, make sure the gun's pointed in a safe direction all the time, just in case. Stay safe out there, everyone. Have a good one.